When it comes to investing, there's no shortcut to success. The investing world is full of people looking for a fast route to quick riches, and there's no shortage of professionals willing to sell you a solution that makes them rich. So rather than following short-term tactics that may or may not lead you to success, understanding a few key principles will keep you on track and heading towards financial independence. In this 444, I'm covering the four essential elements that you need to understand and master to enjoy a successful investing experience. And they are that investing is a zero sum game, that all news is bad news, the real meaning of risk and inflation is the enemy. Right, let's get into it. Zero sum game. The financial markets consist of millions of participants and most of the money is managed by professional investors. Their focus is on frequent trading with the hope of year end bonuses. They are playing a short term game. That's a different game to you. Now, when we realize that most investors are professional investors, we quickly arrive at the conclusion they are buying from or selling to each other. If we ignore the alarming fact that for a trade to take place, one professional investor thinks a stock should be sold and another professional investor with access to exactly the same information thinks that same stock should be bought. If we ignore that alarming discrepancy, we see that the trade is a zero sum game. Let me explain what that means. Imagine there's only one stock and there's only one share in that stock and it's owned by professional investor A and they think it's worth a pound but its value will decrease to 80p in the future so they want to sell it but professional investor B thinks the value of the share will increase to £1.20 so they'd be happy to buy it from professional investor A for a pound. What happens next determines who wins and who loses. If the share goes down to 80p then investor A has won by 20p. They sold a share eventually worth 80p for a pound and investor B is lost by the same 20p because they bought a share eventually worth 80p for a pound. Investor A has gained by exactly the same amount the investor B has lost. This is the zero sum game. A 20p gain on one side is balanced by a 20p loss on the other side. If the share goes up in value then B wins by the same amount as A loses. But both investor A and investor B, if they're professional investors, will charge a fee for their services. This makes the sum less than zero because both investors, A and B, will charge a small fee, reducing the sum below zero and creating a net loss. This is why actively managed funds, where a fund manager with a team of analysts pouring over all the publicly available and private data to work out what to buy and when to buy it, will often fail to beat the market average and why index tracking investments outperform most active fund managers over the long run. Private investors need to realize they're playing a different game because they're investing for the long term. They have different goals. They're investing for their financial independence. That magical moment when they know they no longer have to work for the income they need to support their desired lifestyle. At this point, working becomes a choice. So decide which game you're playing and then ruthlessly eliminate all information that does not apply to you. The monthly market returns are irrelevant. Do not let them distract you from the wonders of long-term investment. Fight the worry. The mainstream media loves bad news. This inevitably creates a pessimistic view of the world. It's natural for this negativity to impact our perception, but we should always try and remember that in general, the world has never been a better place to live, despite the current problems. Wars, recessions, stock market declines, a global pandemic and a plethora of other terrible situations. Yet the market continues to climb over the long term. If we allow history to be our guide, the default long term position should be one of optimism, the real meaning of risk. Many people mix up volatility and risk. Volatility is the unexpected, temporary, short term decline in value. Risk is the unexpected loss of capital. Or as Carl Richards describes it, risk is what's left when you think you've thought of everything. Human behavior can convert volatility into risk by selling an investment when it's down. Being a mature, long-term investor comes at a price, not a financial price, an emotional one. You'll be forced to endure frequent but temporary declines in market value of your assets. The market will experience a decline at some point during the year. Every year, they come around more regularly than birthdays. Big drops also happen, not as often, but when they do, it can feel scary. These unexpected declines are a feature of the markets, not a flaw. Do you hold or fold? Hold and the market will eventually recover and you will be rewarded with the investment return for taking the risk. Fold and sell out to cash and you turn a paper loss into a real loss. You only get rewarded with long-term investment returns for sticking with it. I've done a video about this here. It can help you to get a better perspective on how to approach investment volatility.
know the enemy. There's only three things you can do with money. Spend it today on having fun, invest it to spend tomorrow on having fun, or give it away to people and causes that you care about. Money's only use is purchasing power. The enemy is inflation. The silent but deadly steady increase of prices over time. Only by defeating inflation will you have the ability to buy the same amount of goods and services in the future as you can today. If your money's in not invested in assets that will outrun inflation, your standard of living will inevitably decrease over time. So with volatile investment markets and four or five percent interest available on some cash deposits in the UK, some investors are selling up. But this is a short term view and ignores inflation, which has been much higher over recent years. But that's not the real issue. The real issue is that if you get out of volatile markets into cash, when do you then decide to get out of cash and back into investments? There's a danger you'll remain in cash forever, not knowing when to get back in. And perhaps this is even worse, you get back in but only after the market has rebounded and you buy back the same investments but for more money than you got when you sold them. And that's wealth destruction in action right there. Now we're looking to grow this channel so more people like you can find our content on YouTube. So it'd be great if you could hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. If you like this video, I think you'll really enjoy this one that explores four behavior gap sketches that explain investing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.